Right, so we'll just uh, show that soon before we do anything. Coffee's in production. Oh, oh, it's my thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, Bev, so what's happening? Uh, we're seizing the day, carpe diem, as they say. Um, it's a nice day, it's quite mild, and for people who are as rusty as us, it's as good a day as any to go out and refresh. So we're just stowing the dinghy away, um, taking that thing off the side this, this afternoon so that um, it doesn't catch on the boats or coming in and out, because that would not be good. And then hopefully we're going to go out and do a bit of just jiggery pokery and around. And we, we'll get the diesel filled up, we haven't filled up the diesel for six or eight weeks, so it's about time we did it. Um, because we do use it for heating over the winter. But we've got the boats prepped, we've got the Z reefs to run into the sail bag, and we've got the storm lines to take off and things like that. So we're going to be a while, but we've got three, four hours daylight, and if we go out for an hour, we'll be happy. Uh, I'm being told off. Um, I've just done a whole intro piece and I forgot to mention the fact that we're supposed to be doing electrical work today, but I'm so overwhelmed with the thought of getting out for a bit, I just couldn't resist it. So the electrical work, it can wait till tomorrow. Sailing today. you're equipped for bear what's going on we've uh, got something loose um, on the side of the pontoon so we're just going to remove it but um, uh, I just remember one of the things that um, another fellow yachty said about uh, your drills he says buy expensive buy cheap they sink just the same but which is why <laughs> I've got a couple of bowlings on mine I don't know why I bothered getting the drill out, I won't be needing it, but at least I will be using one of my new Christmas presents, a crowbar. <laughs> so yet to use is the spongy mallet and my favourite, my wobbly bits. <laughs> you and your wobbly bits. Yeah, we've got all the screws by the looks of it. Yes. Uh, oh, right, let's start the engine. Oh. Right, you're doing this one, I'm doing the front. Something's not right. I'm not getting. No, I'm not getting an alarm. Okay, if you push the... Yeah, I'm just going to do it again. Right, fuel gauge needle is up. No alarm. None of the cluster lights have come on. Check the starter battery. Uh, uh. Try that. Because it's still on. Up, up for the alarm, up for the alarm. Okay, just to see. Right, it started. I think it's back to the slip. <sighs> We're gonna have to because um 
until we find out what this is. Why? Well, yeah, because, you know, we're not going to go out. Not with a fault like this. So what's happened, Bev? Well, um, the alarm didn't, well, I'll face the camera. Um, we um, always test our alarms every single time we start the engine. Today the alarms didn't go off, so we have a fault of some sort in the electrics panel. And we're not prepared to go to sea with a faulty panel. Um, the engine is now running. She, the engine was still hot from coming around here, so restarting it wasn't an issue. Yeah, and um, because the um, once the engine is uh, running, then you don't need any additional electric. It's actually uh, charging things up. It's probably a faulty lead on the panel itself. Yes. But the problem is, what happens if it's on the starter button and the next time we press the button the engine doesn't go round at all? Yeah, so we had hoped to do some uh, sailing today, but it ain't going to happen. Um, it looks like we're going to be doing electrics! <laughs> you game. did this! I know! <laughs> okay, you nearly ready up there. Right, give me a second, or we slipped. I want the steering off first. Right, stern's off. Slip now, please. Just slip. She'll be fine. Following the success of viewer question of the week, we have decided to introduce a new feature called Berk of the Moment. And that would be me at the moment. Um, due to a complete and utter lack of practice, because I've been sitting on my backside with all these storms coming past for the last couple of months, we find the source of the um, ignition problem. Uh, and it does help if when testing the alarms I press the alarm switch and not the glow plug switch, which is what I was doing. So there's probably absolutely nothing wrong with the boat or the engine or anything else. It's just that the alarm test didn't sound because I didn't press the test button. I pressed the glow plug button because I didn't have my glasses on. So yeah, so maybe if tomorrow's a nice day we'll get to go sailing tomorrow, but I just feel a bit bleh. <laughs> They On the plus are. side, I've got a curry for dinner. Yay. So that's nice. Well, our window brake has just moved off. <laughs> lucky for us, the wind, or perhaps unlucky for us, the wind's from that direction today, so <laughs> I'm not going to harangue them for taking my wind brake away. But yeah, it turns out that we didn't throw away a good day's sailing, um, or at least an afternoon's out and about. Um, there is a problem with the engine panel. Uh, we came out to do something with it yesterday and the test, the test button is failing. Um, as you can hear... You can't hear anything, Bev. That's the problem. The silence is failure, I'm afraid, in this. So I've got the torch and I've been looking in through the... Um, through the inspection hatch and the electrics are well clear of the steering cables because they're all in here together with the Morse cables and the electrics for all this but they're all secured to the sides and they're all good um, so I don't think we have any choice we're going to have to pull the engine panel but while we're at it we might as well pull out the steering wheel take out the autopilot inspect the drives and just do everything it's been a while since they've all been looked at about two years so 
we might as well pull them all out and spec the lot. Um, because it worked later and but it's not working now, what do we think it is? Uh, my money would either be on damp, um, faulty earth, loose connection, something like that. I don't think anything's physically broken. I think something's fell off or something's rusted or it's got damp in it, something like that. I agree. Let's see what is the uh, it is in reality though. <laughs> right, okay, Bev. So job number one is to remove. Job number one is to take the wheel off. Come on, Bev. You told me it'll take seconds. It does normally just spin that knot off, and the wheel comes off in your hand. But it's obviously been a while. Can I get my crowbar out again? No. Nope. I'll just check using the winch handle. One, two, three. Got it. There's an additional nut. Whoops. Which you don't want to lose overboard. And I'm being gentle on this because I've also got to disconnect the autopilot in a second. So just, there we go. The wheel is now off. Let's take this rubber boot back. And then this should just unclip. And it's off. Right. Okay, okay. Didn't, didn't quite take seconds, took about a minute. But a minute is 60 seconds, so I'm going to stick with it. So, what are you doing now, Bev? Cleaning the autopilot out. Um, we've stripped it all off the wheel. Um, the important thing is that the belt, which drives the autopilot, it's still clean and the edges of it exhibit no sign of fraying, so that looks good. The bearing race seems to be fine, so there's no problem with that. Uh, we've got a little tiny bit of salt crystals or possibly galvanic where the screws from the brackets fitted in, so it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put a wee bit of Duralac on these before we put them back. So we'll do that. Just a blob is all they need to just cut down any galvanic reactions, but this one and this one are showing it. Um, that one there a little tiny bit, other than that all looks absolutely fine. So I think we're just going to give this a slight clean and put it back together again. Right, well we've, we've, we've got it out, we've broken the seal on it and got it out. Um, there's nothing obviously wrong with it. Um, we can see where the wires go in, they all look to be marked. We've just got to disconnect the power cable and then we'll run from there. Um, this thing that you can see here is the main um, connector which connects up to all the uh, boat functions and engine functions. We just disconnect it like this and the whole thing comes out and then we just need to disconnect that red wire which is the power. Well visual inspection shows um, there's actually a little bit of damp in the background here. Um, I can see some down here and I can also see some down here. There's definitely some damp. That will need to be cleaned out but as a primary cause damp is good for an electrical failure. So it may just be that all we need to do with this is dry it out. But we'll check everything anyway. Okay, so on our fault finding journey, Beverly. Right, um, obviously it could be something very simple like the horn just doesn't work. You, know, you could press the button all you like, but if the horn doesn't work, it won't make any else. So what I've just done is I've connected up to the boat's 12 volt system, which is now on. And I've got this connected up. This is the, the earth side, so Clearly the horn works. So if there's an issue, it's not with the horn. So now we follow the wires from the horn back to the next bit, which will be the switch. And what we'll do with the switch is we'll connect it up to a voltage supply and then toggle it. And if the switch is working, um, we will see the voltage on a multimeter or something like that. So that will be the next thing to test. A lot. Uh, right. We hadn't really intended this, but this is going to turn into a viewer question of the week section. We have been asked, how do you fault find electrics on the boat? How do you find what's wrong with electrics on the boat when they go wrong? And we hadn't intended to use this as an example. We were going to film something in a week or two's time, but you know, this has gone wrong. We have to find out what's wrong with it. So um, if you're like me, very, very good thing for uh, fault finding is a pair of glasses because without them, I can't see a darn thing. But if you don't have glasses, <laughs> you have to worry about that. There are two tools that we highly recommend. One is a good pair of cutters. For cutting. Um, 
And the one thing I would say about those cutters is that they have to have a flat edge. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, where they cut here at the back, it's if, if they have a groove before you get to the blade, it's not that good. You want a nice flat back on them so they cut cleanly and really close up. Um, but anyway, a nice set of cutters. And the other indispensable tool for electrical fault finding is a multimeter. Now, you don't have to go out and buy a Fluke 200 pound. It's a brand of multimeter. It's what all the proper electronic engineers use and it does everything but make the coffee. This one here was off Amazon and it was extremely affordable. You could easily buy it. It costs less than just about anything you can buy in the Chandlers. So this is not an expensive unit. But it has this lovely little function where if it manages to uh, make an electrical connection, you get a beep on the thing. So you can use this, you can put it into bits of the thing and test that there is electrical connections where there should be electrical connections or more importantly, you find one where there shouldn't be one. But with this, all you do is follow the wires. Go start with the faulty component, test it to see if it works. So what I would do in this one is I can very easily find the faulty component. I can insert this Oops, into the wiring loom and I can now test the glue plug. And you can hear the beep. So the glue plug function works. So that's that one done. Now this switch is a dual switch. It has another function, the other one being the test function. So unfortunately for me, that's in under all this and that's where these come out. So I will cut away the straps that support the wiring and I will make a clear path through to this other one and I'll test it the same way. I'll put these in and make sure that when I throw the switch there is an electrical connection formed because this will beep and if that happens I know the switch is good. So if the switch is good I can then follow the wires elsewhere. I know the horn is good. I've already tested that and I tested that using this little nightmare which we uh, threw together from a car accessory thing and a couple of crocodile clips one of which is marked positive. And all we do with that Plug it into the bolts 12 volt circuit, plug it up to whatever we want, switch the circuit on and all of a sudden the unit in question has 12 volt power from the bolt battery. So that makes testing very easy. I can then run around with this checking that everywhere that's supposed to have 12 volts does have 12 volts if it doesn't. So that then just leaves the question how do you know what's supposed to have voltage? Well your friend if you can get hold of it is a circuit diagram. If you don't have an official one there's probably one on the net somewhere. And this shows how every component is connected to every other component. But if you don't have these, don't forget the wires are there. The wires connect the components up. So you can follow the wires along. And if you find a wire that's broken or out or something like that, that's probably your fault. Nine times out of ten, the faults are incredibly simple. A wire's come loose or there's damp in something or a connector's corroded. It'll be something like that. And you'll go, oh, look at that. It's not meant to look like that. Fix it. And the problem's usually solved. One time out of ten, it'll be nastier just the way the cookie crumbles. So I'm now in the process of starting from the switch and following all the connections back until I find a fault somewhere. Damp, corrosion, loose wire, broken switch, who knows? But I'll find something if I look. <laughs> My focus. Oh dear. Well, Go that, has, that hasn't gone to plan. <laughs> the battery, <laughs> the multimeter's run out of battery. <laughs> oh dear. Lucky for us, I'm sitting beside the spares cupboard and I'm pretty sure I have a spare multimeter battery so <laughs> I did not expect that one. Ah, well we've had the panel drying out for a couple of days now and um, we don't feel too inclined to go out and fit it today. It's cold, it's damp, it's miserable, windy and we're not in a great rush. It can stay here for another day or two. We're fairly sure it's damp. We'll put a bit of WD-40 on some of the electrical contacts and hopefully that'll keep the water out. Um, we'll put some butyl around it to seal it up and back in it'll go. Autopilot seems fine so everything's good. So I think we'll leave it there for this. Um, if it doesn't work when we install it we'll let you know. <laughs>